hitching up the truck. <laughs> hey guys, what's going on in YouTube land? Today, we finally get the chance to shoot the hookup video. It's not like we haven't tried. This is our fourth time trying to do this. And now it's nice and sunny out and we finally get to shoot it. And at a benefit, our dogs are at the vet right now getting their teeth cleaned. So we have the house empty. So it's a lot easier to deal with right now. Listen. Yeah. Crickets. <laughs> <laughs> Let's get started. So everything is secured and we're ready to pull these slides in to get on the road. I like to leave the uh, front door open so that there's plenty of airflow because we've actually blown a window out before because they were sealed so tight that when we pulled them in, it created like a vacuum and sucked the window in. So while you pull your slides in, always make sure to check as they're coming in that it's not going to hit anything that you didn't miss. Let's go outside. Give her a good shake. <laughs> so when we get to our next location, I have to clean all this crap out that has accumulated over the last month from the dogs and all the mud here. Close her up. always in. I can't tell you how many times we've seen that on the highway when people forget, forget and leave it out. This inverter, you want to make sure that's on because if it's not, then all the stuff in your fridge goes bad. I don't care what anybody says, make sure you travel with your propane tanks off. John and I got to watch a motorhome on I-75 in Florida one time just go boom. So turn them off. Now we want to take out our X chocks. You want to make sure you take these out before you start raising or lowering your RV because your wheels can get in a bind and actually bend these. So make sure these are out before you adjust any of your landing gear. We got a friend traveling with us. One time we took a frog from Florida to New Mexico with us. <laughs> Yeah, I'm sure I'm sure when he got out of the RV he was like where on earth am I? <laughs> now we're gonna start to tear down our utilities first is the water and the sewer hose and leave the electric for last now While our hydraulic system is run on hydraulic fluid It takes electric to engage the solenoid to send hydraulic fluid to the landing gear So I always like to leave my electric plugged in while I'm doing that after I'm hooked up then I disconnect the electric Let's start with the water So I've already turned off the water from the pedestal and what I'm doing now is draining the rest of the water out of the line and then I'll manually drain the water out and then connect it so the water doesn't leak all in my internal bay. So in your wet bay, it should have something that says like low point drain, that's what you would hit. This is the heated hose that he has on right now which we absolutely hate but it is the best one on the market that we have found for regular hoses we like the zero g zero g hose for the regular one i will put a video uh link in here for you for rv must-haves and we talk about different hoses so now he's literally holding it up to drain it out <laughs> This is why I hate this hose because it's like trying to wrestle a 400 pound python because it's so stiff. Whereas the zero G hose is like an electrical cord, super easy. Before we undo the sewer hose, you wanna make sure all of your tanks are closed. A big thing I recommend, rubber gloves when you're undoing the sewer hose because you are gonna play with sewer. It's like you're at work. Yeah. So I take out the riser and then I drain the rest of the fluid out of the line and do this a couple different times. Once you've raised 
your hose up and drain the majority of the water out. Go ahead and disconnect this and hold it above where your drain point is so that all the excess fluid runs into your drain. FYI, so people don't cringe, that was gray water, which is from the shower. A lot of people have debate about where they store their sewer hose. A lot of people put it in the trash bag and put it inside their bay. But since we have the Anderson hitch, I like to do this. Follow me. Throw it around the tongue. So that way when the RV goes down and sits over the ball, it can't flap around and doesn't move or fly out of the truck. Some idiot stole our cap out of our bumper because that's where we used to store it but we're just too lazy to replace it and this is really easy this we're not a big fan of plastic ones we like the metal ones but the metal ones are way more expensive so once these break we are going to get the metal hose riser but we have the camco one right now we're just not a big fan of it because these little hinges here tend to break if you're going to get something like this i recommend getting the metal one there's yucky on it leaves and this is kind of a non-negotiable before you start hooking up make sure you put wheel chocks one in the front and the back so your rv doesn't rock forward or backwards or start to roll away from you which we've seen a couple different times our level up system is uh, from Lippert, so if you have a Lippert system, this is most likely what it's gonna look like. Ours is the older version because our rig is a little older. When we're going to move our jacks around, this is the panel we come to. We're gonna scroll down to this one. We're gonna go to manual mode and hit enter. Now, a lot of people like to use the hitch height. I don't like that because it's never the same, so I always do it manual. So now we're in manual mode and we can adjust the front and back jacks and we can adjust the height left to right. When you want to raise them up, you push retract and then whatever one you wanna pull up, if the retract is not on, then it's going to extend your jacks. A lot of people ask us what kind of pads we use to go under our jacks. I didn't really like any of the ones that were available on the market, so I decided to make my own, which is where we got these. All this is, if you're wanting to make this at home, this is four by fours in the center, and then a two by 12 on the top and bottom, and you space them out enough that you can fit a rope through the middle, and then you just screw the two by 12 on top into the four by fours, so that way you uh, have a nice little carrying handle. And it's a very solid pad. Now, a lot of them are the plastic ones that are on the market. We've had some of those that have just gone bad or dry rotted or broken under the weight of the RV. And we have had no issues with these. This is all pressure treated wood, so it's not gonna rot. The reason we have smaller ones in the front, you can see they're a lot shorter. And the reason for that is you want your front jacks to be able to go down as far as possible when you're going to auto level your RV. If your front jacks can't get low enough, it will never get level. So a lot of uh, manufacturers even recommend you don't put anything underneath. Um, but we've noticed if we don't do that, we sink into the earth quite a bit. We've already raised up the rear jack, so now we're gonna extend the front. You can see the attract, retract light is not on, so that means whichever one of these buttons we push is gonna raise the RV or extend the jacks. So we want to extend the front jacks. After you get your trailer hooked up to your truck, you wanna go through your settings and find this auto retract. It's gonna make sure all of your landing gear is pulled up to its highest setting before you take off. And all you have to do is hit enter. The things we have in here that we have to connect, we have our trailer brakes that we hooked up to a clasp. That way we can just connect it inside the bed. Our trailer brake system, hooks up to the inside of the bed. Now we do have one on the outside where you would have to route this cable to the outside of your tailgate. I like it being in the bed because I don't want this cable slapping around on my tailgate as I'm driving down the road. When you have the Anderson hitch 
when you go to hook up this will be extended out and then whenever you put your trailer onto your truck you push this lever in and then turn it to lock so it can't come undone while you're going down the road last thing tailgate goes up because you do not want to forget that when you go to make a turn you're going to smash into your storage bay there the last thing you want to do is you want to disconnect your electric don't just pull this out because you can fry your electric system that way you want to disengage the breaker here and make sure that your service is turned off before you ever pull out your electric cord This is another thing we highly recommend. Get a surge protector for your RV. So this is what I was talking about. We normally would store our sewer hose in our bumper, but somebody stole this end cap piece. Once you have everything hooked up to your truck and all your utilities unhooked, what you want to do now is a walk around. You're checking your jacks, make sure they're raised up. You didn't leave anything out. Nothing, none of your windows are open, anything like that. Make sure everything is locked down and ready to go. And then check your lights, your brakes, turn signals and running lights the very last thing leave <laughs> no no this is why john has run over this is why we recommend these heavy rubber things because he runs those over way too much yes i'm gonna check the lights but if you ever see us rolling down the road make sure and honk and wave <laughs> so when you're in the vehicle, you want to do a couple things. You want to test your trailer brakes by squeezing this. Now it's best to kind of get a rolling start and then squeeze these and make sure without touching your brakes on the vehicle that the brakes on the trailer are slowing you down. If you have an exhaust brake, I recommend turning it on because it's going to help save your brakes and it'll help you come to a faster stop if you get into an emergency. And then lastly, you want to turn on tow haul mode. This helps save your transmission. Uh, it changes your shift points and makes it easier for you to haul heavy loads. So you want to make sure those are on. All right, guys, it's time to do everything in reverse. We made it to our RV park. We will be in this site for the next three months. First step is to chalk the tires. Go ahead and check your electric by plugging in a surge protector. Once all good, plug in the coach. Deploy landing gear and make sure everything is nice and level. Before pulling out your slides, install your X-Chalks now. Hook up your water and sewer lines. It is currently winter, so we are using a Purit heated water hose. If you're RVing in the winter, make sure to insulate your water spigot. We used an electric heat coil in addition to insulation. Finish up by making your site nice and comfy. Outdoor living is just as important. You can see we set out our patio furniture, propane fire pit, grill, and our turf to make our fur babies comfy. We also travel with fencing for our dogs, but this RV park doesn't allow it. As always, thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe and give this video a thumbs up. Happy trails.